Hi all, and welcome to the video. I have been asked on numerous occasions, Carlos, how do you make your videos? What mic do you use? What software do you use? And editing, etc., etc., etc. They're all questions about the process of creating the videos. And in this video, I'm going to explain how I do that. Okay, well, right now we have a piece of software I use more and more, which is OBS. Uh, there are alternatives on the market, certainly, but I found this one to be really simple to use, extremely effective, and gives me pretty much the best result. Now, at the moment, I've got it set up to display capture so that I can show you OBS as I'm explaining the settings. Now, you can see there it's already recording. It's recording the desktop. It's desktop section here. Yes, it is. So if we look at the settings now, I've got, well, you can't see. Um, I've got a streaming setup, but for recording, which is what I predominantly do, you can see here, these are greyed out because you can't change them while you're recording and I am recording with OBS. So here's the settings I use given I'm recording at 1440p, which is the native resolution of my desktop. So I'm recording in MP4. I use two audio channels. Uh, I'm using the NVENC, which is the NVIDIA's built in encoder. It hooks it, but it's not as light on the system as Shadowplay itself. Um, there's a rescale which I don't use. I, the bitrate I have at variable, uh, the bitrate itself I have very high. That's, yes, you are reading the zeros correctly. This is headroom. This is why I have it that high. I could set that down to 26, which is what 1440p video streams at on YouTube. But you have to remember when you see that, you're watching a re-encode of that video. So I capture as much as I can with virtually zero pixelation because the bit, the rate control is variable. So if the scene is very still, it's not using as much bandwidth. As soon as you start moving around with lots of trees and literally the more of the image that changes, the more bandwidth you are using. That could be explosions, that could be trees. It doesn't really matter. The mechanics of how video compression works means the more that's changing in the scene, the more data you need to reflect that change. And so I have it variable, and this gives me about the best results. Constant would fill up a drive very quickly. Now in Skyrim, I'll be recording and at some parts during the stream, uh, during the recording, it'll be a still scene, like you're, you're in your inventory or somewhere like that. And it might drop as low as 10 megabyte a second on the recording. And then in other scenes like battles and things like that, it'll go all the way up to the max I've set it to here, which is 250,000 <laughs> or 250 megabyte per second, way above what it can do. Uh, preset, I use high performance. It doesn't seem to affect the quality. Um, because it's 1440p and MP4, I've got the profile set to high and level set to 5.1. Two-pass encoding I use, and it's on GPU 0 because I have a single GPU, and then B frames on 2. In the audio, actually I'll come back to audio, yeah, in the advanced you can see I've got renderer Direct 3D 11, there's which is your graphics card. I use color format NV12, color space, the uh, YUV, I have it 709 at four. Um, YouTube uses 709. If you right click any video, I'll show you very quickly now. If we go to one of these, Ooh, I've got another message, I get hundreds a day. I will look at that very, very shortly. If we look at the last AO video, going to pause it there and I can go full screen like so. If I right click any video, and this is the same for you, click on stats for nerd, you can see there, color BT709. That's the sound codec they use, Opus 251. 
So yes, there you go. I'm just going to close that down. I will look at your comment later on, I promise. So yeah, I have it set to there. Audio monitoring. I, I This will depend entirely on what you have set up. Uh, I've got an external um, audio unit there, an M audio M-Track 2, which I really should upgrade for one of the Focusrite devices. And the rest is pretty much as default. On the audio, I always sample rate as high as possible. Um, you will lose a little bit of quality going into encoding it for YouTube and then YouTube doing it itself. So you have uh, 48K, stereo, line in, stereo, etc. This is going to depend largely on the equipment you have. And that's, that's how I'm set for audio. Okay, on video, this has to do, you see, video output is currently active. Turn off blah, blah, blah before you try and change it. So you can see base canvas is my desktop size or my native monitor size. And the output is exactly the same. I'm not scaling, in other words. So I'll cancel out of there. In audio, uh, if we look at the advanced audio properties, because I'm recording through, I always have desktop audio or the game audio, basically. That's set. Uh, pretty much completely flat to track one then the mic I have set down mix to mono because it does try and put everything on the left side so I have that checked and that's on channel two and that's pretty much it unless I start doing something more complicated like recording when I've got people on discord because they will be on a separate channel again now there's another feature in here called filters and all I do on here, I've experimented with all sorts of things, and you can see they're all disabled, and all I've got is an extra 6 dB of gain. For whatever reason, OBS, <laughs> whenever I am uh, uh, inputting the mic, seems to see the microphone at a different level than any other recording software I've got. You can see here that this is me speaking in real time now, and you see I'm just touching into the red, which is fine. You don't want to go too above that. The industry standard is you should be hitting about negative 6 dB on peaks, and that should sound pretty good. Right, I'm now going to move. So I think that's basically covered most of these settings that are important. So I'm now going to move OBS over to another monitor. Boom, there you go, it's gone. Now, when I finish the recording process, if we go into here, I record to not that drive, actually. I'm recording to this one, OBS, here. Uh, as you can see, there's a file that's growing in size there. There's the first half of the recording over there. Uh, some other stuff that didn't work, etc., <laughs> etc. Et so you can see there's lots of uh, little files in here. Uh, this is the last uh, Let's Build video, and you can see that's 42 gigabyte and just over an hour long. And then you've got the last Skyrim episode, which is uh, 54 minutes long, but 48 gigabytes a second. If we look at the bit rates on these, you'll you'll see why the headroom comes into play. So you can see there, massive file. We go to the details. You can see there's the resolution time. And then, yeah, 126 megabytes a second on average. This is an average, but there'll be points within the video where that bit rate is a lot lower as i mentioned things like menus or where the you know the actual scene itself is not actually changing all that much dual audio i always try and get audio as high as possible so once all that's done i then open up my editing software and that, that is premiere premiere is bloody expensive so don't worry if you don't have it now i'm going to open up uh, the Anarchy one, seen as they're the most popular. But if you are using Premiere, then I can give you the exact settings that I actually use. So what we're looking at here is how I have it set up for editing. What you can't see and what most people normally have is their, their video window there. So what I'm going to do for this video is move that over here and just resize it. I have that over on my second monitor. Uh, I need to make that smaller again. This is why two monitors are great. See how small that is? Normally that's taking up an entire second monitor. So I'm looking at that as my editing screen. So I, I've got play here or there. So I can hit play. Hi all, and welcome to the video. And there I go, yapping away. But that doesn't tell you how I do it. You can see there's dozens 
dozens. There's probably close to a hundred edits on this of various things, which I'll try and explain to you as we go along. So I'm going to clear the entire thing. Yes, I am. And then I'm going to re-import this so I can show you how this all works. Right, so here's the raw footage. We're going to drop that in, take it up to the beginning of the timeline, zip to the end, and voila, we're, we're kind of set to go. Now, audio is a much bigger factor when it comes to video than you think. People will watch a low quality video with high quality audio for far longer than they will ever watch a high video quality video with terrible audio. They will switch it off far, far quicker. This is something that YouTube has analyzed that, uh, uh, trust me, it's just how it works. People are more sensitive to bad audio than they are. You know, they will watch a 360p video if the audio is perfect. If it's got 4K resolution, perfect picture, but the audio sounds like ass, they're not gonna watch it. It's as simple as that. So don't ever skimp on the audio. It's something I focus on, especially coming from a musical background. Now, you can see here, I've got this set up so I can see both audio channels. They're now set at zero. So, mm, you know, they don't need to be higher or lower. I can do all that from another tab here, which is the effect send. Now on the game audio, uh, I'm just gonna mute myself for a second. And I'm going to turn off any effects. There we go. Right, so uh, let's get to where something in the game is happening. Uh, oh, there you go. I can see this is the video track on here, video track one. Then I have the game audio here on audio one, as I showed you in OBS. Audio two is voc or vocal. So that's me yammering away. And they're separate and this is very important that they are because you're going to treat them in different ways so you can see here here's me fighting which you know you can see here that's pretty darn loud etc in fact it might drown me out as i'm talking silly amounts of uh, reflex but yeah so it doesn't quite balance so what can happen with game audio the dynamic range so that is the loudest sound all the way down to the quietest sound can be quite dramatic in a game far more than it would be in most movies especially if you watch them online on youtube or any streaming service the audio is much more narrow in what the quietest sound and what the loudest sound is now because of that i use this here which is a very simple tube compressor with this comes with premiere if you go up here and go amplitude compressor i just went to this one after trying dozens out and faffing around with settings and googling tube model compressor there you go now what we don't want is two on the same track so i'm going to get rid of that and what it does because it's up here in the effects area it means anything on this track is affected rather than trying to take a audio effect like here you can see because i have other musical music based software i've got a ton of this stuff here far more than you would get by default um and that i'd be using on drum recordings and hi-hats you know not necessarily something you would ever need to use on a game or this type of stuff but it, it, it all lives there because it all lives in a certain folder so you can see down you could go down you could eventually find that compress it and then drop it onto there but I don't advise doing that because you might need to drop in audio or use a separate clip and then you can't remember exactly what the settings were and you're just making more work for yourself. Whereas you put it here and you know pretty much you're always going to keep this at the same way, then you don't actually need to worry about that. So what have I got it set to? Well, let's go into that because I am going to be asked and I know it. So as you can see here, uh, I set the threshold quite low at negative 10 dB, minus 10. Zero gain. I don't need it for AO. AO's gain volume is pretty loud. It's very dynamic. The compression ratio is 4 to 1. I'm going to skimp over what the ratio really means. Uh, if you think of it as a factor, okay, if you picture a factor. So, if you imagine the loudest sound, so something right up here, um, what it's going to do is, if it gets beyond negative 10, it's going to start 
to push the volume down, like, like a volume knob, but much quicker uh, and far more accurate. So it's going to push that down very slightly at a ratio of 4 to 1. So every 1 dB above it that it tries to go, it's going to push it back down by 4 dB. And the result you get just on this audio here is like this. So it just tames it, it kind of compresses it, it literally is compressing it. So it's taking the quietest volume, lifting it slightly, taking the loudest volume, moving it down slightly. Uh, the attack and release do affect the way that sounds and the way it responds to the sound. And what I found best for game footage was a, a 10 millisecond attack and a 250 millisecond uh, release. It just seems to work the best, especially for AO. So that's that. Now, on my voice, so I'm going to give, play this dry. I'm going to turn off the effects I've got here without telling you what they are. Uh, so what you're going to hear now is me speaking into the microphone completely raw. So those of you looking at the map probably spotted we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yes. So it's a little quiet and you might think, oh, I need to turn it up then. We are. It's more dailies because but it's also a little boomy and things like that. So what I do is I use another compressor. Now this one is from a company called Reaper. I've got their software, I think it's still on the desktop. Yep, there you go. That's what I've downloaded, VST plugins for Reaper. They're completely free, they're tiny, you can see they're 1.1 megabyte. Uh, you, Im you import them into your VST folder. If you wanna know how to do any of that kind of stuff, just Google it, you'll find it for Adobe. These are the settings I use. So on the threshold, I have that set to the quietest sound I make while I'm speaking. So not the noise floor, but as I'm speaking, I might go, mm, do I want to do that or do I want to do? And that's it. I set it to the quietest volume there. Then I have pre-comp, attack, release, etc. Now, pre-comp, I set five milliseconds ahead. What that's doing is the compressor itself is looking ahead. So it's working here, but it's looking, let's say, over here. It's not because that's not five milliseconds, but that's how fast I'm making it look ahead. Five milliseconds ahead, giving it a two millisecond um, gap to affect the sound. So if I go, oh my God, you know, really, really loud, it doesn't blow people's eardrums out. It pushes it down. As you can see, if I, move that away you can see this working here it's more dailies because that is the actual reality after see there it's pretty calm carry on if you want to get etc but you'll get other areas where i'm louder where am i loud i can kind of see from the waveforms yeah somewhere around here hi all and welcome and there the you video. go you can see there that is pushing that down so there you go three milliseconds attack release time of 100 milliseconds ratio only three to one that's plenty for somebody who is simply speaking not singing not shouting or screaming just singing uh, i have no gain on there i set it to limit output so if it tries to clip it it just can't uh, and then i blend a little bit of the original signal back in which is 20 percent of it roughly so you can see there 20 db um, just to make it sound more natural, more more like it actually sounds if you were sat in the room with me. And like I say, this setting here is going to be different for everyone, depending on the microphone, your voice, how your microphone responds to that voice, etc., etc. So for me, that just seems to work. Now, there might be another session where I, I accidentally have the mic further away and I might need to move this further down. There might be a, another thing I record where the microphone is a little closer. So I need to move it back away from where I am for where it starts reacting. The next thing I do is a little tidying up with EQ. Now, if I start playing back in this one, it's let's build. You can see this here. Sick. Now, that is a ton of rumble right there. That, that's chest resonance. Now, not everyone has as much chest resonance, uh, resonance as me. Some people have more, etc. Every voice uh, is different. So the exact settings I use, if you copy them, uh, to a certain degree, they're going to help, but they might not necessarily work 
for the best. It's going to depend on, number one, your voice. Number two, uh, your microphone, where it's positioned and the environment you're in. And, you know, a lot of other little factors, how that microphone responds to your voice. Now, how I sound through an SM58 is not how you will sound. You can't buy the same microphone and sound identical to the person using it. It's going to have a lot of the same response characteristics but it's not going to sound exactly the same because a voice is made up of hundreds of different little frequencies all working together and that has to do with your diaphragm uh, your vocal cords your throat your your nasal cavities your sinuses inside your head the shape of your teeth uh, the, the way your lips work you know the, the, there's a bazillion funny little you know quirks for every different person so what i find for my particular voice you can see here and this one it let's build it you can see this Between yellow series six no. yeah me fumbling around with the intro there um <clears throat> so i have a low cut at 70 there's literally if you listen to everything below 70 it's just mush it really is. It's just noise. It's just like... It's like putting a sub-bass speaker on when it's with nothing else and all you can hear is... You can't make out a word anyone's saying. You don't need it. A lot of people will boost the low end to try and sound more earthly, you know, more manly voice or something. And it's like, don't, don't do that. Everyone can tell you've done it. It's like doing a bad Photoshop of a flexing your arm and using the bulge to it everyone can see it just don't do that honestly don't do that work on your breathing go to a vocal coach etc develop your voice mine is completely shot basically i've a lot of chest resonance a lot of volume and projection but that that all comes from the background i've had and genetics so you know you you can't fake that sort of a deal um don't try if you, if you want if your voice sounds wimpy to you it's because it's you're hearing it for the first time here's the thing how your voice sounds to you when you're speaking is not what everybody else is hearing it's not what your voice actually sounds like so in my head i sound like james earl jones the truth is i don't i've got a much lighter voice than someone like that with a fantastic voice you know uh, so the reason for that is your eardrums are connected to the same sinus cavity headspace that your voice is generating sound in. So much like putting a microphone inside something to listen to it versus having a microphone on the outside listening to it is that difference, which is why when you first hear your voice recorded, it, it, it's always a slight shock. But other people say, yeah, that's you. I can tell that's you. Don't, don't worry about it, honestly. <laughs> we, we're not all James Earl Jones, you know, it's just one of those. So what I do, getting back on topic, is I remove that very low end. Plus, you can also have um, different sounds like a boiler running or um, background noise of a road in the distance. And it's all going to be down here, especially if it's far away. Low frequencies travel further than high frequencies can. They can pass through more solids and all that kind of thing. It's just that's how acoustics work now the second one i cut is here which is kind of this this is what they call mud um it's typically anywhere from 250 to 200 um on my voice it seems a little bit lower and, and this is to do with the microphone and me interacting with each other and for me it's like 188.2 was the nearest I could dial it in and I dropped that by nearly 3 dB and that's quite a noticeable difference and that clears up a lot of that mud and low end that you don't really want um, and then funnily enough the bandwidth worked out with this particular software at 1.88 as well how bizarre uh, next now sure mics can sound a little sibilant and by that it means the high frequency sounds can be a bit you know like she sells seashells on the sea they can be a bit harsh to listen to you, you your listener may not be initially aware of it but they will kind of grow weary of listening faster if they're there now a lot of people try and boost 
that frequency it's like ooh, I, I wouldn't unless you're recording a guitar or something like that you know so i cut that and that's just a smidge under 4k and i drop it by a very small amount uh one point you know one point less than 2 db which unless you're listening on really good headphones or listening on uh like studio monitors it's difficult to hear 3 db difference you will hear on just about anything but if you're talking about you know this kind of eq even the subtle bits can have quite an effect so it just tames part of my voice that this uh, microphone picks up a lot and it's done that way because like i say it's a stage microphone it's not you know a recording artist's microphone not really although you know they have been used on records uh, and again bandwidth right the way down at 1.24 okay the last thing i do is a high shelf i just give it a tiny kiss just a touch more uh, volume on the very top end if i hit play again up there yeah <clears throat> Hi all, and welcome to the video. There's In very one, little, little, there's very little happening there. You could tell by that yellow line. Um, you know, there's a lot of low end, plenty of mids. It starts to drop off here, but you see that's its actual volume. The human ear will hear this area louder than it will hear this area. That's how our ears work. So I just lift the top end a little bit just to make sure the clarity is there. And that's at 10,347.1. Um, and I lift that by like two bits. There's virtually nothing there, but it just lifts it ever so slightly because the, the, the SM57 doesn't need that. It's very toppy anyway. Uh, so people can hear detail, you know, they're used for outdoor broadcasts and like presidential speeches. And it's an SM57 with a big windsock on the end of it. But this is just to take that that kind of slight dullness you get on a SM58. I just lift it by a smidge there. Uh, and the bandwidth album there is 1.4. And that's it. Oh, and then makeup volume 4.1. That's it. That's all I do on the vocal audio. Now, when I put those two together, you get... So those of you looking at the map probably spotted we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yes. So there, it's just leveled out. You can hear the detail of the pets in the background. If I turn the compressor off on, on that little section there, those of you looking at the map probably spotted we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yes, we are. It's more dailies because that is the actual reality after. Subtle, isn't it? But when we put it back and just listen to the lower now noises, the quieter noises. Those of you looking at the map probably spotted we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yes. So there you go. You've heard me say the same thing three times in a row. There's a first. <clears throat> he said. And that's it. That's all I'm doing with the audio. Nothing else. Right, so I think we've covered audio there. So moving on, as you can see, as, a, as you import things in a fresh project in Adobe, it will change what's happening on the timeline. I'm not gonna get into the specifics of that. There, there's a million and one uh, tutorials about how best to do this, etc. that I've followed and then changed what I do, you know, a couple of dozen times. However, here's, here's a few things that I will point out now you can see i've got five video tracks <laughs> right there there is a reason for this um now there's here's our video in in its entirety i'm just going to tell it to unlink and you can see track one there you go that's the video track two or track one audio is the game itself and track two audio is that which is me talking so if i the undo's good on this there you go they're all relinked or you can just right click and unlink link etc now uh, i've moved over the window i normally have on a second monitor so I, I can show you what's going on now when you capture video footage in mp4 or with whatever software quite often the footage itself doesn't look the same as the video, you know, the, the actual game 
as you're playing it, as you're looking at it. And what I do is I simply correct the colours and the saturation and any other factor so that it does. And I base a lot of that on what I learned from editing still photos because I'm quite a keen photographer. Now, when you edit a photo, you tend to edit directly on the photo. So what a lot of people will do is come in and go, oh, I need to do the colour, I'm going to gonna put that on there, etc. But I, there's a much easier way to do that now. Let's just check I haven't done that. No, okay. Um, and what I'd use is, in Adobe, are called adjustment layers. So here's the first one. Uh, it doesn't look like anything. Um, if I open it up, though, this is going to be in the way now. I'll move it here, but keep an eye on this picture. I'm going to turn off all the effects effects now, it looks like i've got a lot going on there you can see the pictures suddenly got a lot sort of duller let me just do that that's it i've got two i've got three-way color corrector this one uh, the reason it's got this one written on it is simply because um i didn't want to forget what i'd done because i spent so long fine-tuning it and all i'm doing when i switch that on you can see the colors just suddenly pop a little more especially if you look at reds like here now all i've done there on the color wheels is spent a long time and figured out oh the blues are a little overpowered and the mid tones need shifting a little more towards yellow orange to make it look like it does when i'm playing the game so what i've done is i've had this open and on the same monitor do it on the same monitor or you're going to confuse yourself so i've had this open exactly as you see now and then gone right and fired up the game and then i've just sort of like because i play in um uh, windowed mode i'm looking at the footage i'm flicking back to the game footage game i'm making adjustments so that it looks correct and i, I got the color balance to about there uh, the only other thing I did was add a, sm a tiny bit more um, saturation. Saturation is how much colour you've got. If you remember the old CRT TVs, they usually had a, a colour plus and minus button or control knob on them. And it's literally that. So there you go. At zero, there's virtually no colour. And at 200, it's like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> RGB vomit, which i don't see that when i'm playing the game it's much more subtle it's down here 100 is you know zero it's kind of actually the default and you can use desaturation for a million and one reasons i do that the uh, dynamic range of the footage i just expand it slightly it starts off these two are somewhere near here and i just move them out by eye again going back and forth to the actual game footage, which I can't really show in a video. You'd have to be in the room with me for, for me to show you that. So that's all I'm doing on colour correction. It's very subtle. I, I don't know if there's a way to describe the actual settings. They don't read out as numbers anywhere, so I don't think I can. So I'm just going to close that up and then sharpen. I have very subtle. So you can see there it's on, but you can't really see what it's doing. Uh, I have it set to 5. Now, 0 is the default. I'm hoping you can see this. I'm going to make this a little bigger, just for this part, so it's clearer. There is how it looks, and it's just it looks a little unfocused. So, I mean, this slider goes from 0 to, you know, like 100 like that. And if, if you put your mouse over it, you can go to you know ridiculous amounts of sharpening uh which you might want to do for some bizarre reason but i never would so i literally after faffing with it have it there and it just slightly brings things back into focus especially once youtube's done its thing with it now, there's dozens of videos you will never see that i've uploaded to youtube where <clears throat> they're like three minutes long and they've just got different varying amounts of sharpening on them and me just not speaking and moving left right with the cam you know with the, the game camera and checking out different stuff there so let's pull him back and have that over there now like i say normally this is over on another monitor so it's a bit cluttered here at the moment but when i'm actually editing it's good but i can't capture 
two monitors <laughs> onto one video. It's just one of those things. So I'll start off the video. I'll check where I actually come in. You know, it might be something like this. Hi, all. <clears throat> yeah, and, and then clear my throat and faff around, get the wrong number or whatever. And then eventually, hi, all, and welcome to the video. I'll say, okay, that sounds good. We're all set there. So I will add, and now by default, there there is a million and one shortcuts for your keys in Adobe. Now, what I did was go into the settings and tell it I like dissolve as the default uh, transition on video and exponential fade as the one I like on that and set how long they last. So I can hold the control button, highlight that, control D, control shift D, and I've done that butt end there. And although that sounds a little complicated, once it's under your fingers, you're okay. So I've moved this over to the very start of the timeline. Is that the correct one? Are we there? Are we on it? Do I do another one? No, nope. because I've done that before and had two intros. Yes, that's a thing. Just move it a little bit more. I'm trying just to do it as I would. Right, so okay, there's the fade in there. So as I play that back now, in this one, it's... No, nope, that's not the right spot. I need to go further back. Is it there? To the video. Hi, all. Ah, there you go. I found the right spot. So now, hi, all, and welcome to the video. In this one, it's Let's Build a Tune Series 6, number 28. And then in comes the intro. So what I'll do is I'll cut there. And while the intro's running, I used to have just a other video running with this music that I wrote and recorded there. But I've, that's evolved over time. I've sort of become more sophisticated in my editing. Yes, I have. So I'm just going to move that a smidge over, drag the video back to there, put a transition in. Now I'm going to find that edge there. That's a little close, actually. So I'm just going to go that much more. That might even be too much. Let's move the timeline playhead to there. Yeah, about there. That looks good. Uh, zoom in. Okay, and then I'm going to stretch this till it reaches there. Transitions again using the shortcut. Press the C key, it brings up the scalpel. Edit that bit. Uh, then I'm going to do same again there. Yeah, that was a good guess, wasn't it? Knowing it would line up to the beginning of the audio from the edge of the fade. Yeah, that, that's what happens when you do this a lot. So I'm going to do that and that to the other audio so it's not clashing with this audio. Now this intro is that music. Um, there's an AVI file. I'm just going to turn everything off, including the video. So the AVI file and audio, oh, no, you turned the wrong one off. It's just that. You see, it looks like a black background. It's actually a transparent AVI that I made in Adobe After Effects. And I'm not getting into how complicated that was. So, okay, that's there. I'm going to turn that off. And then the next thing you see is the Anarchy logo. They're like apparently growing and or coming towards you and then fading away. And all that is, I need to unlink these. They're linked to save me putting them all back into place so that's a PNG so that's another transparent still image and all I've done there is uh, the opacity pretty much is just set to screen and then I've got where is he scale so as I move the playhead it, does it actually show it yeah you can see at the very start Is it going to move? Yeah, if you watch this number here. Okay, it starts off at default and fades in. Sorry for the audio doing what it's doing. And then as I move along, I get it to there, 422, and then fade it out again. So that's, that's how that effect is created. 
Uh, I've then the next layer we've got is a blur, which I'll have to turn this on for. Now, what I've done with this, it's a second adjustment layer. I've added a Gaussian blur, and at maximum, there you can go, um, the blurriness at this end. So blurriness at 100. And then as it plays through, you can see that the blur number is decreasing until it's gone. So the overall effect is the one that you all know. So I'm going to uh, select all these, relink them. Oh, I pressed the wrong key, that's why. It's shift in Adobe instead of control for multi selection. So there you go, all three together is the intro you all know. And then I start yabbering. So those of you looking at the map, there you go, and in fades this. This is a PNG from the, <coughs> excuse me, this is a PNG from the 8O site. And all I've done with that is just scale it. Um, I'll show you now. If I delete that from there, grab the original, drop it in. You can see it's a bit small, but if I right click, and tell it to scale there you go it's it's done the job and then all i've done is add a fade in at the beginning and a little fade out at the end then in come the titles nowhere yes and that's a wipe quite a long one i'm going to delete it and this is what it looks like without it middle of nowhere yes we are it, it boom it's suddenly in your face if i put it back and do it very very slowly you can see there so the whole effect is map probably spotted we're out in the middle of nowhere yes we are it... and you, you just have to make a, um, a creative judgment there you're, you're looking at it deciding whether or not you like it etc and that is just the first 35 seconds of the video then it really gets complicated. No, I'm joking. It doesn't. Um, you pretty much, I carry on the same. I, I sit and watch what's going on as, as though I'm um, someone viewing it, like here. Anything that would add to... And I'm yabbering. And then I kind of see up ahead, or I'm, I'm watching the video. We get to this point. Can we? No. A little bit more. And I think, do I need that gap? Yeah, I'm not, so, I'm not saying anything, so maybe if I do that and then hold shift and delete, butts them up together, just make sure they're 100% in. Then I, I use this a lot for zooming. If I had another scroll wheel on the mouse, I could do that. So then I'll put the fade and the audio, because obviously the audio is different on either side. If I take that off, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it's firing. Well, we got away with it that time, but... If I take the other fade away, then this will happen. Oh. Okay, so you see that sudden twitch was uncomfortable to, to look at. So I'll go back and put a cross dissolve on it and an audio fade just to make it smoother for the viewer. Okay, it's firing. It's GTFO. And so on. Uh, I think a bit further along. I'll edit out little things like along here. Don't forget, when I recorded this, I had quite a heavy cold. Drop the perks on it. And my nose was running, and instinctively I just sniffed because I'm sat in a room on my own and being disgusting. But what I can do now in, in post as I'm editing is I can go in, put a little cut there, and just drop the volume all together. So now, drop the perks on it. So yeah, as far as this, uh, the perfect crime, yes it is. So I'll carry on like that and then there'll be other areas like there, it, it's pretty weak. Like I'll be chatting here. Because Lefty's not hitting it very hard. Not a lot happens there, so I'm going to cut there and go to there. Once again, I'm going to go like that, butt them together, just make sure and... Shortcuts again, a lot quicker than dragging them across. Learn your shortcuts in Adobe. My God, it will make your life easier and make your video editing a lot faster. 
him very hard. That said, he can't hit me at all, so... Trade-off, maybe? Blech, horrible noise. So, yeah, anything like that, I'll go, oh my god, did I do that? <laughs> you know, and then you can just come in and, you know... Commit crimes, like this. And then, like I said before, I can edit this down. Trade-off, maybe? There you go. We didn't even get battle music for fighting this. There you go. The guy who never needs to sniffle or snuffle while he has a cold. It's a lie. And then, for example, there'll be other instances where I think at this point here... Should we run out or shall I be very lazy? Let's speed it up a little today. I'm going to log my fixer. Yeah, so what happens here is, you can't see this on the video image, is I go down, I keep talking, twice thinking about it. So I get to there, and then at this point, I've actually tabbed out of game, but of course, OBS is still recording it, and then someone clicks a light switch in the hall. Thanks. And then, just as we get to here, I'm casting grid, um, to fix a grid onto the main character. Tabbing back okay. to this guy. So I think, okay, let's go from just as the nano lands on him, so just as we come to a halt, we'll delete the bit in the middle, which is me logging into game on another account, like so. And because it's actually quite a big gap we're covering, I'm going to put that up there to close to where I stopped talking. And then on this side, have we got it there? Let's check. Go a little bit further in, not much. And I'm going to extend the video fade to about there. Yeah, that's quite gentle. Get them together. Then I'm going to extend the fade out because it, it, to the viewer, it, it sort of sends the cue that a break is about to happen. And I'm going to extend this to 20 frames there. And here we go. Thinking about it. Yes, indeed. Okay. Okay, fixer grid number one. You see, that's very easy to watch. That feels very natural. Um, you know, you can look away for this, from the screen while there's nothing there, and yet it doesn't feel like you've missed anything. So, you know, there's lots of stuff like that that gets edited, and like over here, there's other people going around the house, and there's another light switch going. It'll run rather well. Thanks. Switching the lights on and off. So you've got that going on. Uh, and the thing is here, we've got the game audio is playing something musical. I don't really want to lose that, so I'm going to do that and edit that down there. Rather well. Yeah, I didn't realise it was at that point two of the pets disappeared. Okay, we've landed in Bliss. Bliss is unbroken. And so on. And if you've already watched the video, you'll probably start looking at it, looking for all these little cheats. Um, they're not cheats, they're just stuff that does happen in, in you know, video editing. Like here, there's a big gap for what happened here. Oh yeah, I crashed and re-logged. So, okay, we need to, you know, fix that. I'm probably coughing and spluttering here. There's a can't be in combat on it. Where the f f f f f for my other two pets? Now I've crashed. Yeah, I do. I think I sneeze there. So anyway, uh, we don't need to see that. So once again, I'll do the same sort of fade in and out. See, if I do a a quick blend like that, uh, it, it, it could be a little jarring. That's a very short gap. Watch what happens here. Now I've crashed. What I want to know is... See, I could do it like that, couldn't I? That would work. Or I could make another creative choice, like I did before, because there's a longer time in between, is kind of emphasise that time has passed. You know, the, the, the person watching knows, oh, his game's crashed, he's got to re restart the game and log back in. 
So I, rather than do a, an instant fade in, I'll do this. Now I've crashed. What I want to know is why the other two pets had to vanish. You know, why not all of them? Why? Why? And off I go on another ramble. So that's it. I'll do all of that until we get to the end, or I need to amend something. So um, I think at one point I was I, I didn't know what nano drop from lamb, and then I found out. So I created a title, and I just simply type in the text and put a little fade on either end. So now it's sort of like, oh dear. Uh, and just make sure it's there yeah. long enough for people to read, etc. And that's it. I'll proceed through the whole video like that. You can see where there's big gaps like this here. We're going to lose the heel pet for real this now. And I'll kind of go, okay, we just to keep the tempo, I'm going to go in and cut these gaps because they are just, you know, where I'm concentrating. But we want to kind of give it a sense of drama. So I'll just bring all these together and put some very quick edits on them, like so. There we go. And then now, we're going to lose the heel pet for real this now. Oh, I'm getting hit, getting hit hard. Okay, we're going to run. And so on. You can see that I've still got those effects running on myself. Yes, we is. We're going to run. For whatever reason, those two are fighting each other. Don't know why. I'm nuking myself like a new. And so on. So I'll do a lot of that just to keep the video length kind of reasonable. Um, and, uh, you know, I try and keep it around or just under an hour. And then for the outro, I usually say pretty much the same thing. It's just become a force of habit that if I didn't say it, people would complain. This happens, you know. So I'll just put a little gentle fade out here and bring the titles in just before the audio the cue you know the the uh, the outro which is the same music again anyway folks i shall leave it there and just say oh there's a click in my voice there anyway folks anyway folks oh that's horrible now i can export that and go and try and fix it somewhere oh that's loud as well or I can zoom in, there it is. I'm going to go to P, which is the draw tool, and I'm just going to put a marker there, marker there, and I'm going to kill it that way, because I can't splice. I can't use the uh, slice tool. If I try and use the slice tool, see, it wants to cut this much. It won't let me go as accurate as the audio. So now I've cut that little bit out there, and we go through. Anyway, folks, I shall leave it there and just say bye for now. And we're off. Like so. Um, <clears throat> once all that is done, then what? Well, we go time to export. And what you need to do is make sure you haven't accidentally just clicked on that and then gone file export. If you want to be 100% sure, go all the way to the top of your menu here. You'll see this. This is the actual timeline. Make sure that's highlighted, file, export, media. And you can see here, these are the exact settings I use. I'm on H.264. There are a bazillion, but trust me on this. This is the one that YouTube uses. So go with that. Then YouTube will actually, you know, uh, render the video back out in its own format a lot quicker because this matches it more closely. So going to go into there luminetry look it's very subtle i'm going to go somewhere in the middle in the preview window you can see that it's pretty close to where it should be but you see that let's find somewhere with more flat colors yeah so there you go that looks a little flat compared to what i see in games so i'm just going to there you go. And it just lifts it because once YouTube gets hold of it, it washes the colours out. So it's like we're turning that colour volume down again. Whereas like that is probably what it would come out like. And that would be okay. But like this, if I upload it, it's slightly too much. So when it pulls it back, you actually get this rather than 
you know, even more washed out kind of look. Uh, video, um, you can match source for the most part, but I would definitely change these. Now for 1440p, I have it set at 24 uh, as the target bitrate and the maximum bitrate at 60, which typically winds it up using a variable um, bitrate. But YouTube likes that because that's what YouTube uses to, you know, avoid file size um, and data in streaming. So 24 to 60, and it, it'll tell you the average is 26, which is what YouTube themselves tell you you should use. I'll show you that now. If we go to, where are we? YouTube help. Oh, God, more messages. I shall I shall be checking them later. So it'll it'll go there bitrate and it'll tell you right here what this is YouTube's own support Google doo -doo -doo, right? So 1440p at 60 frames a second. Where are we? 24 megabytes per second kind of deal. Yeah. As the average and you can read through there's a lot more kind of bits about frame rate, about codecs what the audio should be doing, contain, etc, etc. There's, there's a load of things there. So you've got all that. Um, 24 to 60 will give a, a file size. Let me just minimize that. Uh, they'll be out on this drive. Vids, there you go. I don't think that one's there, but there's the last Skyrim video. So you can see there, that is only... 8.34 gigabyte whereas the actual file i started with when i was capturing it is 48.6 gigabytes <laughs> you know so a little bit different but yeah th this is what happens with video compression so i'm capturing really high rendering out to pretty much what youtube is going to use anyway and youtube tends to hit turn my videos into um you know 1080p videos within 20 30 seconds of uploading it, it's got it done it says processing it goes really really fast and then you've got to wait maybe two hours after that and you get the full 1440p some people have said in the middle of watching it's actually done it for them so yes there we go a kind of overwinded uh, or long-winded uh, overblown explanation of my personal process on that and there's a lot more fun you can have with editing as well um like when we do the oh god like the the, the beginning of a uh, let's play or let's build rather when people are voting um there's a lot more stuff like there we go there's a vote there that came in tall so with that i'll go okay let's use wipe but, you know, it'll be on screen for, like, that long. So it'll come in, like, get on to the next apotheosis, I like so. That's all it is. And that's just a title, like that. If I open any of them up, I can do whatever I want with them. You know, I can move them around or, you know, whatever. I'm just going to leave it where it was because, who knows, there might be another Let's Build series and I've got all the templates ready-made because that would make life a lot easier, wouldn't it? Now, before I close, I'm just going to click on here and say no, because I don't want to save that and upload it by mistake. No, I don't. Anyway, folks, I'm going to leave it there, and then videoception, I'm going to be editing the video I've just recorded about recording. Yeah, never mind. Okay, folks, bye for now.